In Dia de los Muertos, I honored my grandma because she showed me the basis to, to celebrate and incorporate all these components and food to receive and bring welcoming to our family after they pass away. I'm all about like honoring our loved ones, our friends, and what a better way than to do it like this. We get together as a family, we have music, we have food, we have drinks. It's a party where we get to reminisce, where we get to tell stories, where we get to come together as a community and as a family to remember those who have passed away. Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead, with origins in Mexico, with the Azteca and Mexica, a day to honor the dead, the past ones, our ancestors. There's a three-day festival starting in November 1st when all of the little ones come out and lead the procession. On the second day is when we get to greet our loved ones with offering, with our ofrenda, anything that they loved we offer them on the altar, pictures of them, memories of them, stories of them. We get to greet them and remember their lives. Dia de los Muertos is a universal holiday that can be celebrated by anyone because death is a universal journey in all of us. I just think it's amazing. I'm all about like honoring our loved ones, our friends, and what a better way than to do it like this and let you know and just really give them the time and respect that they deserve. We're lighting it um, as much as I can I kind of uh, like this one like look at the person that the candles in front of and you know and just in my head kind of wish them well wish their family well. I think the initial spark happened when Paul again my partner was outside we had some juniper bushes in front of our house that we really needed to get rid of. <laughs> He's out here just ripping and pulling and getting frustrated. And through all of that, it made him think about his father who he had lost um, quite a few years ago when we actually, actually when we first met uh, to a motorcycle accident. He's like, oh, you know, I wish my dad was here. And it was in the fall. Um, and that just was like, oh, we should, instead of decorating for Halloween, the traditional Halloween this year, let's, let's do this. And I was like, go for it. I was raised Irish Catholic um, and I wasn't ever super religious. I just knew like personally my belief is that there, you know, there's something out there. I don't know what it is, um, but there's something. And then I met my partner almost 10 years ago who is Hispanic and kind of opened my, my eyes to more of a Hispanic culture. A lot of these people actually left their photos in our care for this year too. You know, unfortunately through the couple, last couple of years, I've lost two of my best friends to suicide. Um, I've lost some family members. And I was like, you know what? I need this as well. It was cathartic for us to really, you know, kind of acknowledge our losses, but then also give them a place to be and to be honored. And then we're like, well, we love it so much and, and I'm kind of a social guy. So I was like, well, let's send it around to everyone. And then that's when Paul was like, oh, we should do it a community thing. I was like, let's do it. <laughs> and we think of this as a place of honor. So when people do come and we like to give them time. Thanks for coming. And I just like to hear stories, really. I'll be like, hey, like I did, you know, we had one drop off some a little bit ago. I'm like, hey, who is this? Like, what are they to you? Um, and I just like to hear their stories. And sometimes they're sad, but a lot of times they're happy. I'm just thinking of all the great memories they had. They'll bring little trinkets and, you know, little things that the, the person may have liked. Um, meeting people we didn't really know, like uh, Paul met family members he didn't know he had. <laughs> threw photos on the ofrenda. He's like, cause someone's came and like, oh, that's, you know, my aunt so-and-so. And then he was like, oh, that's my aunt so-and-so. And they're like, oh, we're related. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. You're welcome. You know, I'm there to talk. I'm there not to talk. Whatever they feel they need to do, I want to honor. So, you know, someone has passed on and we need to remember them. And, and from what I've learned and with culture, you know, um, Day of the Dead, we, they, they can come back and kind of visit their family members. So they put up the ofrenda. Again, normally it's one person. We're opening up to everyone to kind of give them kind of the path to come back to. And you'll see people, there's like some food up there. So they'll bring things that they like to kind of nourish their bodies while they're, they're visiting and kind of 
being with their loved ones and then and then going to wherever they may need to go depending on what people believe you know i think that they they're around for sure and like i said earlier i feel like i've got this whole group of really amazing individuals really want to provide a space for a safe haven for honoring your loved ones for taking the time out that you need to really reflect on the good things in life and not the negative, you know, even though, you know, someone could be there that you've lost, that you've loved and it's hard and you're struggling. It's just to realize you can go through that, but also see the good. God, Goddess, all that is. Pachamama antepasado, swinged beans. My work is, I have been given the name Tecolot Siwaro, which means great horned owl woman. And in, that's in the Mexica tradition. In the Mayan tradition, I have the energies of um, the bat, uh, which also is a nocturnal. These animals are nocturnal and work close with death. My work really is about taking people into their death, the death of maybe what no longer serves them, maybe it is going into um, removing the death. Let's say they're very ill. Uh, my work is about going and asking the death to move away from them. In the big picture, I, in all of this clients, I see people for every different thing you can imagine, um, from health and wellness to um, maybe they're preparing for death, maybe they're preparing to have a baby, maybe it's infertility, but most of the time, the big chunk is relationships, matters of the heart. Hello, I am Nataline Ruth Cruz. I am a shamanic practitioner, Mayan priest of the fifth sun, energy worker, uh, spiritual counselor, energy healer, and teacher, amongst other things. <laughs> My Italian grandmother had a little, she wouldn't call it an altar because she was Catholic, but I call it, I know it was an altar-ish. She had candles burning, um, all her saints, her favorite saints, and she um, prayed to the altar all the time and talked to the ancestors. You would catch her talking out loud a lot and we'd say grandma who are you talking to and she'd say oh i'm talking to albert which was my grandfather who had passed this is my brother silvano daniel cruz the younger brother who passed away several years ago him and i were super close it was the biggest heartbreak of our family he died at 35 and he is with me all the time he's really funny um and so sometimes I hear him, I communicate with him all the time. And sometimes I hear him telling jokes, like in the in most inappropriate time, which was what he would have done. Like if we had something serious going on, he would have been whispering some kind of joke in my ear. He still does that. Um, he also helps me when I work with people um, that have had some issues that he suffered from. So whether it was like addiction, um, mental health issues, he shows up and shows me how to guide them from his perception. I, uh, I work in the shadow, I work in the dark aspects of a person, so death meaning um, that which you can't see. I feel strongly that we have a divine alignment, and so when they come to see me and they say, I'm lost, I'm not sure, I don't know which direction to go, my, my motivation or my intention is to align them with their divine movement, their cosmic movement. You pick up negative energy just in everyday life, walking around the world and dealing with stresses of everyday life. It means a lot to honor your loved ones, your ancestors. Um, we wouldn't be who we are if it wasn't for the people that came before us. Um, I really take an honor in you know, showing respect to them and leaving them little gifts and letting them know we haven't forgotten them because once you stop speaking their name, then they're forgotten. I ask to lift any heaviness from her heart. When we fear death, 
we actually hinder our existence when we can face our death. We actually live um, fully. And so my, my job, my teachings, my counseling sessions are all about getting people through their fears um, and crossing that line because the, the fear that most people carry is the fear of death. And so when we can face the fear of death, we can face any fear, which means we can fully live um, and live what I call in bliss and really fulfill our potential because we no longer have death um, nipping at our ankles. Well, death is still there. We're not afraid of it. We know our time is limited and so we make the best of our life. For me, Dia de los Muertos isn't just a one day. I believe in life after life. In the Mayan tradition, in many traditions, they believe that there is life after life. And so when we talk about death, it's really the idea of the body, dropping the body, the physical death, but that the rest of us, that many aspects of ourself are eternal. And so when we um, look at death from that perspective, my my feeling is that we have nothing to be afraid of, that this is just a moment in time that we're passing through here, and this isn't the first time. I fully believe that we reincarnate, we come back, we travel into different dimensions. Death is one of those dimensions, and so uh, people take death very seriously, and I do in the sense that we mourn the person, we mourn the loss of that person, but I also believe um, that we should celebrate, that the celebration of knowing that they have now returned um, to the ancestors, returned to the resting place, returned to a higher dimension, is something that should be celebrated, and that we should not fear death in the way we do, that if we embrace it, we actually could live here and prepare for our death in a very very beautiful ways. Then I'm gonna have you like kind of put your head back a little bit. I've always had a passion for photography ever since I was young as a teenager. Now if you want, can you hold it with both hands? Hi, my name is Nayeli Vasquez and I'm a photographer. I specialize in maternity and children. The way I started doing Dia de los Muertos photography kind of mixed with my maternity sessions was because I'm also a person that's very crafty. I like um, to create backgrounds. I use face and body paint. Today we're using the Meron uh, face paint. I feel like when I'm doing makeup on myself, that's the one thing that I really like to coordinate with is the colors. Um, that I'm wearing. That is just gonna go on top. I've done looks like this on myself before. Hi, I'm Gabriela Rodriguez and I'm the self-taught makeup artist. I started trying to experiment with makeup when I was very young, about 10 years old. But it's totally different when you're doing it on someone else because everybody has different features. So the representation of my photo shoot today is I'm going to be doing a photo shoot with an expecting mom in a scenery of jungle with a Aztec outfit. The reason why I'm doing this is because Dia de los Muertos uh, comes from way back a long time ago, like 3,000 years ago. Uh, it's where these traditions started with, with Aztecs y Mayas. Even though it means like you know, we're celebrating the past life, the people who are no longer with us. It's also a celebration of life, so I'm bringing a new human to life, and I think it's a nice experience. I chose to do this because I like El Dia de los Muertos. Hi, my name's Asanet Chavez. I'm from Brighton, Colorado. It's not for everybody, though. It is tiring <laughs> sitting here for a couple hours and then having to stand um, for another couple hours but it's worth the experience. I'm expecting a little girl in about a month. It's definitely an experience that I would tell any pregnant woman to go through. There's nothing like having yourself get all glammed up, painted up, and having a photo shoot. I think overall I was fine because I've done modeling before, so I was really prepared for the pictures. Um, I was excited. It's something new. I've never done a full body painting. 
before, so it was something new to experience and play around with. The way that uh, Mexico remembers somebody is not in a sad way, it's in a happy way. I feel like when I'm uh, taking pictures of a woman that's expecting, she's bringing a new life into this world. I'm originally from Los Angeles, California, but uh, at some point in my life, I go to live with my grandma in Mexico City. And uh, this change of life brings to me the opportunity to discover my, my blood, my family in Mexico, and all the traditions that they have at that amazing country. Living in Mexico is starting my first step in, in, in the kitchen, no? in, in, in my culinary process. My first teacher are my grandma. I'm Oscar Padilla, and I want to share with you this beautiful recipe to celebrate Dia de los Muertos. Enchiladas with mole coloradito. Let me show you to do that. Okay, I'm ready to make our picadillo for our enchiladas. Uh, the ingredients that we need to use today is uh, chopped tomatoes, garlic, we have a pork butt, then toasted almonds, we have uh, banana plantains, so sweet and delicious, chorizo, we have a uh, lard, and red onions, because it's more sweet and bring an amazing flavor for our picadillo. In Dia de los Muertos, I'm honored my grandma because she showed me this beautiful tradition. She's put on myself all these amazing components and things to do this tradition to share with the rest of my family, with my friends. You know, she showed me the basis to, to celebrate and incorporate all these components and food to receive and bring welcoming to our family after they pass away. Let's go to chop a little bit more tomatoes. This is simple and easy. And uh, then, we start to make everything in a beautiful saute. I'm in love with Colorado. I've discovered this beautiful city and all the influence that this new culture is bringing to the, to, to the world, to the country, and I want to be participate with those. We are adding the lard, and when the lard is very, very hot, we start to adding onions and garlic. We need to caramelize the onions and the garlic together. Chorizo. Now, we need to roast the chorizo with onions and the pork butt. And now we need to incorporate our tomatoes. After our tomatoes and um, chorizo and pork butt is already cooked, we need to add all bananas. That brings a lot of a sweet flavor. And all toasted almonds. And we condiment this with a chipotle in adobo. And we condiment with salt. We need to cook this for 20 to 25 minutes. Dia de Muertos, you know, a thousand years ago, they start to celebrate their, their family. And that tradition is coming to the actuality, you know, to, to these years is beautiful. It's something that we need to respect. And we want to share not only with, with the rest of the people in Mexico, we want to share with everybody around the world. All our ingredients are cooked and incorporated. And we have the filling for, for our enchiladas. For the mole, we are using uh, this recipe from Oaxaca. We are using dried chilies, like guajillo, chile chilhuacle, tomatoes, a couple nuts, seeds, Mexican chocolate, lard, a couple of spices like cinnamon, cloves, uh, black pepper, and then you have these beautiful and amazing colors. Now, let's go to assemble our enchiladas. We have these tortillas, soften it in a hot oil. We have our picadillo. Let's go to roll it. Now, we transfer to our plate with our mole sauce. All these components for these traditions bring the experience that 
your family from the other side come back and they, they, they found again their favorite dishes, their favorite drinks, these amazing colors, no? This tradition is, is to celebrate their, but it's to celebrate us too. We're using red onions, beautiful radishes, micro cilantro or cilantro leaves, and we're finishing with a little bit cheese. For me, and um, for Mexican culture, family is involved with everything, you know? It's not only your, technically, technically not your, only your familia, it's your friends, you know, the people that is close to you. And this, this celebration is to, to welcoming all these people that when they pass away, to coming back and celebrate the life and the death with you, with your family. It's a beautiful dish for Dia de los Muertos. I love it, it's a little bit spicy, it's sweet, you know, it's juicy because the picadillo with all these tomatoes and caramelized onions bring this, uh, this uh, beautiful sweetness flavor. A lot of people is so scared about the, the death, no? Like, oh my God, no. And at some point we went to death, but in Mexico we celebrate with the death. Be happy because in at some point you are in communion again. You, you remember your family and you be with there at that point, no? That specific day is to, to be with there and celebrating with, the, with, with all these people. And this is the mole enchiladas. Making this meditation together and the goal is try to feel more relaxing and try to be in the present and not continue thinking about everything that you left behind. We have an amazing activity around the Day of the Dead, but at the same time to support and understand much better what, is, what does that mean about wellness. The Day of the Dead is now a so popular tradition here in Denver, Colorado, in general in the United States and in different countries. We are here to celebrate the Dia de los Muertos but at the same time to connect this with wellness and understand much better what does it mean about wellness and how we can support ourselves to continue moving forward. Putting there their family members on the special people and this activity help the people understand much better about or learn much better about their family using the art and created this family tree. With the Latino Cultural Arts Center, we wanted to be focused more about family, tradition, celebration, memories and ofrendas. There's gonna be another things that gonna be important about the day of the dead, but we're gonna to try to think about this. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Ruiz, and I'm a facilitator at the Cultural Arts Center. Some people gonna feel emotional because thinking about day of the dead, some people feel like, they, oh, I'm not ready thinking about my grandma or my grandpa or thinking about dead in general. That is the reason that we bring an activity about family tree. This is not my family tree, it's my husband family tree. I will pass on everybody, don't worry. Your family can be the your family you were born. Well, that can be a family you choose, and that's okay. Because for example, there are people that they probably are not close to their family, or they don't know their family, and that is okay. But probably you, you have your own family because it's your neighbor, it's your friend, or it's your professor or whatever, and that's your family too. What we try to do with these community settings uh, is we're trying to make sure that we have community connect with resources. So a lot of times life gets in the way, work gets in the way, and we often feel stressed or tired or at a moment of crisis. And sometimes in those moments, we don't have the ability to reach out to those resources that's if we know where they are. After the pandemic and we were isolated and there was just the social ties that held us together got weakened or broken. And so this is our attempt with the LCAC to kind of create community while we teach about wellness, while we learn about the traditions of Day of the Dead, especially from a standpoint of resilience, especially from an indigenous perspective of balance. So your social, your physical, your emotional, your mental, your spiritual, how all of those, taking care of all of those different aspects contributes to wellness and builds resilience within our community. I have more colors. Ah, you feel Spanish. Okay. Tengo más colores y si necesitan más colores, me los piden. Hay suficientes colores para crear hoy. If we have many traditions in Latin America, it's not only Day of the Dead, but something beautiful about tradition is the way that you cannot connect with other people, is the way that you cannot connect with your community, is the way that we cannot feel more human, more empathy. And we say, oh, I now understand why this tradition is important. And that can expand 
your perspective about the lash, that can expand your life in general. And that you can use elements to connect, painted elements, good elements that they connect this person with your life. And uh, we will make an, a picture for you today. Traditions is not only about where did you have this tradition in Mexico. It's beautiful that you're gonna bring this tradition to another country. For example, I'm from Venezuela and started with this tradition four years ago when I come to the United States to Denver. And I was in a, any other activity and I participated in Day of the Dead. And now it's part of my tradition too. We left our country 12 years ago. With this celebration, people can understand and learn how can I bring memories and feel happiness, safe, and at the same time say, oh, you know, I'm making today um, calaveritas, for example, or I'm making food to put in my altar. It's because this memory connect with me, with my grandma, my grandpa, my uncle, any member pass away. Other people that they don't have family, they pass away, probably they have friends or they have an special people. The day of the dead is not only around family, it's about your special people. Gracias, gracias, gracias to the ones before us, to the ones after us, that this holiday helps pass the traditions on to our next generation, that may we find joy in death, and there is a balance of life and death in us all.